Hi folks, and welcome back for more Let's Play Back to the Future of the Game, Episode 5. The story so far? Marty is back in 1931 to ensure that young Emmett Brown keeps his date with destiny. Teen Doc must demonstrate his electrokinetic levitator at the Hill Valley Expo, an event that will end in disaster, but leave the budding inventor convinced that science is the path for him. Citizen Brown is also back in 1931. This alt version of Brown is now working to prevent his younger counterpart from achieving his destiny. And by the way, where is Emmett? And that's a question we're going to answer soon enough, but just be warned that this section of the game, this very first section right here, is a little buggy. There's a way to actually hit a showstopper bug, and I'll probably show that off. And there's also a way to get a very, very funny, albeit, you know, useless bug. But for now, I'll try doing what I did the last time. And see if I can actually walk back. And here he nope. comes, right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective. But you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Callahan. Now see, what I wanted to do was actually go over there and talk to Trixie, but the game railroads you into going into this conversation. Yeah, what you gonna do? Anyway, talking. What's going on here? Well, uh, Miss Strickland here seems to think, uh... You should step aside and let the officer do his duty. Now. What's this? Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. Now, if you recall, she was the one that broke up with him after he, you know, he, uh, after his stuff backfired on him. It was my plan to get him back to inventing what he should be inventing. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. Dun -dun -dun. I found out who Harry Callahan really is. And where he comes from. This is, is there bad. something you want to tell me, Harry? Why don't you call him by his real name? Jakob Schmirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! <laughs> A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo. Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh, Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. This is bad. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose, but she's been getting some clout in town ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. Well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh, where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. And thus we have our beginning two things we need to worry about. Our beginning two goals. One, find Emmett. Figure out what happened to him. Two, get Edna out of the way. And if you look, that electrokinetic levitator, it disappeared on us. It's no longer, well, it's probably higher up, but, you know. Yeah. Actually, that isn't the main platform. The main platform's up there, so that isn't a problem. Now, let's look at the rest of this place. 
You've got the phone booth of the future! Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free, so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. But, since we can call it, Marty takes a look and memorizes the number for us. Handy. And now let's have... well, let's... Let's actually have a little chat with Trixie here. Hi, Trixie. That's Techni to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now what can I do you for? Well, you see... Remember how Edna got Trixie, you know, booted out of this job in the first place? Maybe there's a chance she could help us, you know, get Edna booted out of here. But, in due time. So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the Glass House, the Future Furnishings, and of course, Enlightenment Under the Sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. Now, let's see if we can get tickets. How much are tickets? Aw, put your money away. Here, you're kind of like family now, you know? Thanks. Easy enough, huh? Well, let's continue down these conversation trees. Is Emmett around? I'm kind of worried that he's not at his booth. Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah. He wandered down that way a little while ago. He was talking real intense with another guy. Older guy? Looked a lot like Emmett in the face? Yeah. Uh, uncle or something? Or something. Yeah, or something. Look, Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but uh, if your friend's not ready to go on pretty soon, we might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. But you can't. Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. Says you. What time is Emmett supposed to go on? Let's see. Eight kilobeats past 50. We're on metric time here at the Hill Valley Expo. The face palm is not big enough for that one. Edna Strickland is trying to get Emmett's booth shut down. That dame don't know how to mind her own business, does she? Is there anything you can do uh, to get Emmett's booth open again? <sighs> I wish there was, but I'm just a muse. All we can do is inspire people. Okay, you're a muse. Can you inspire me an idea? I'll try. Well? Maybe it doesn't take effect right away. Oh well. No, maybe she'll talk about how... about what loophole was found, huh? Artie told me how you managed to get your old job back. He did? But it was supposed to be a secret! There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, from your point of view. He didn't tell you anything. <laughs> Despite the metric time bit, she's not quite as dumb as she seems sometimes, is she? Come on, Trixie. I'm dying to know how you got the job back. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. Well, unfortunately, that's all she... That's all her purpose really is for this part of the game. Thanks. Happy to help. Unfortunately, that's all we can really get her to do. I don't... let's see, what could I look at? Yeah, here we go. I'm glad Trixie got her old job back. I wonder how she managed it. And honestly, despite how big of a thud of a hint this sounds like, you won't find out. Not anytime soon. Let's take a look at this. Are you ready for a picture radio? wonder if that's anything like MTV. Yeah, not much on the picture radio yet. 
So let's look at the law and <clears throat> the future of law enforcement display. Yeah, there was something else I wanted to say. What was it? Oh yes. That was odd. Now, where were we? Well, speak of the devil. So apparently Edna is talking about us and shuts up whenever we get near. Now can you a potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tannen's speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Now let's see if they'll let us take it. Hey, don't walk off with the recording plant. It's the only one I got. But he won't let us have it. And it won't let us now, look at the suit. No, can you please? He's approaching the electro pacifier. Amazing, isn't it? They say one day we'll be able to stun fleeing criminals by shocking them at a distance. Does it work? Nah, it's just a model. That would actually have been useful. A taser? Yeah. The amazing inebriomatic. Well, from what the boys in the lab tell me, someday we'll be able to tell whether people have been drinking just by breathing into a machine like this. Try it out. I don't think so. Well, come on, you haven't been drinking anything. Now let's talk to these two and see if she will relent on this. Danny, can I talk to Edna for a minute? Be my guest. I'd like a couple minutes of quiet. <laughs> What's this about? What'd you do with Emmett, Edna? What are you talking about? You're the one who's trying to ruin his life. Believe it or not, I'm the one trying to save it. From what? From you, mostly. You really don't know where Emmett is? I haven't the foggiest. If he's smart, he's run far away from whatever dangerous shenanigans you talked him into perpetrating today. Shenanigans? Why are you still involved in Emmett's life? I thought you broke up with him. I did, but then your friend Mr. Sagan told me about your scheme to interfere with our romance. Not a very nice thing to do, Comrade Shmirnov. You don't really think Emmett's gonna want you back after you crushed his heart and tried to stop his demonstration at the expo, do you? Not at first, no. But eventually, he'll realize I've got his best interests at heart, and he'll come running back to me like one of those dogs he loves so much. But you hate dogs. Yes, ironic, isn't it? <sighs> Why'd you go scary, and get Emmett's invention person. sealed up like that? I had no choice. Once Mr. Sagan told me about your attempts to radicalize my poor Emmett, I knew I had to stop him from going through with your dangerous invention. But it's his invention, and it's not dangerous. Okay, maybe it's a little dangerous, but only to him. That's for the authorities to decide. That's not exactly the best way to put that, I don't Any think. Any chance you could talk Parker into letting Emmett go ahead with his demonstration? None whatsoever. And as long as I'm here, that contraption of yours is grounded. I know your deep, dark secret. Secret? What secret? <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't know what, but, you know... Let's go with the obvious. She's a thief. Those charities you were working for, they were all just a front. Uh, so you could wriggle your way into those orphanages and... And steal their piggy banks. Right. <laughs> I know your deep, dark secret. Pretending like you wanted to put Kid Tannen away when all the time you were working for him. Oh, how preposterous. Oh, you never know. You never know. I know your deep, dark secret. It's always worth a shot. You're ruthless, manipulative, and power-hungry. In the service of a higher cause, one sometimes has to stoop to low tactics. But I'm sure you already know that, Comrade Yakov. Unfortunately, I know she can counter every secret. single one of these. You know... What you were whispering about with Carl Sagan yesterday. You overheard? Sure I did. 
And you did a really lousy job at, uh, burying the body. Oh, you didn't hear a thing. What I was talking <laughs> about with Carl Sagan is between me and Carl Sagan. The secret to bluffing is just... You gotta know when to stop bluffing. When to pull back, man. Well, anyway, continuing on. Have you seen Mr. Sagan around here anywhere? No, and I wouldn't tell you if I had. He's more than a little scared of your anarchistic tendencies. Unfortunately. Did you see? Trixie Trotter got her old job back. Oh, I know! I tried to have it out with Arthur McFly, but he refuses to explain himself. Apparently, he discovered some sort of loophole that allows that Canadian to retain her position. Well, the Ladies Decency Society shall hear about this. Make no mistake. Yeah, I don't care. Why is Parker so willing to do your bidding? <laughs> well, the good detective knows that he owes his current rise through the ranks to my reporting on his behalf. Oh. He also knows that I could just as easily pen an expose about his previous nights of drunken debauchery and evidence tampering. You're blackmailing him? Reporters don't blackmail, Mr. Schmirnoff. We look out for the public interest. Except that is completely blackmailing. Okay, this is pointless. I've got to find Emmett. Stay away from him, you anarchist hooligan. And now that we've thoroughly talked to Edna, it's time to cut the video. So when we return, talk to Officer Parker and look at the last thing in this exhibit. In this expo, I mean. See you then, folks.